touch from its athletes. A gentle quickness to control the raging power. Strength to fight the forces of speed. Eyesight to reveal the dangers that lie hundreds of yards ahead, yet only seconds away. Concentration that, if broken, results in disgraceful air. It is a long and painful road from novice to master. Only the few with the greatest desire and determination survive. Fewer still will ever wear the crown of a champion. Today, it's a meeting of the best. Champions all in equally prepared cars. The mechanical factors are eliminated and only the driver remains. It's the international race of champions. In today's run, Jack Baldwin, representing road racing, finished eighth in IROC last year and was the Trans Am champ in 92. Jeff Brabham is a road racer in his sixth IROC. Four times he was the IMSA GT champ. Dale Earnhardt, the current Winston Cup points leader, a six-time Winston Cup champion and the winner of round one at Daytona. Dale Jarrett represents NASCAR. He's a rookie to the IROC, but a year ago he won the Daytona 500. Tom Kendall is a road racer and three-time GTU champion as well as the 1990 Trans Am champ. The first ever sprint car representative is Steve Kinzer. The great sprint car driver has 13 titles. Mark Martin from Winston Cup is in his third international race of champions. He's never finished lower than fourth. Kyle Petty is an IROC rookie, but three generations of stock car racing championship blood flow in his veins. Scott Sharp is in his second reign as the Trans Am champ. Now an IndyCar driver, he's an IROC rookie. Danny Sullivan, the 85 Indy 500 winner and the 88 IndyCar champ. He's now making the change to stock cars. Allenzer Jr., a two-time IROC champ, with his win last May, a two-time Indy 500 champion. And Rusty Wallace, who scored three wins to take IROC 15. He's currently hot in the Winston Cup points fight. Twelve of the finest now pit their skills against each other in the International Race of Champions. Michigan International Speedway, with its 18 degree of bank in the turns, the site of the final round of the International Race of Champions. Hello, I'm Paul Page, and today we determine the champion. All those miles, all that racing, and it still comes down to this final run. Now, as we look at the 12 that started this back at Daytona, nine of them, all the way from Mark Martin, the points leader, all the way through to Tom Kendall, each of those still have a chance to take home the $200,000, but more important, the crown of being the best among the best. Now, there are two tricks here. One is to score as high as you possibly can because the most points are paid to the highest placing position. But the real key is down at the bottom of the chart. The more laps you lead, the more points you will gain. That will be the key. Now, those drivers with the most points, well, they have another challenge as well. Here's Jack. Paul, as you said, Mark Martin is the current point leader in Dodge IROC 18. That's why he carries the number one on his car. But look where he's starting, all the way in the back of the field. You see, in IROC competition, the points leaders are inverted. So the fellow that leads the points starts last in the finale. Now, this means that the drivers that need those bonus points for leading the most laps have the furthest to go from the back to the front. There won't be time to hold back and wait for things to string out. They'll have to go hard as they can in the initial laps to get those bonus points early. It could be an exciting race. And, Jack, let's not forget that the man who starts here on the pole, Jeff Brabham, has twice won IROC rounds, both of them here at Michigan International. Bobby Unzer, how important is the IROC win? Well, to two guys, it's really important. For example, Jack Baldwin wants to go to NASCAR. That's his dream. It's where he wants to go with his motor racing. So this is like a NASCAR type of car. So he wants to do good here. He wants this to be a showpiece. The other guy... Steve Kinzer, the sprint car guy who won at Talladega. He wants to prove that sprint car drivers are real race drivers and they can go fast in anything. Drafting was critical at Daytona and at Talladega. This is a high bank speedway too. How important is it here? It won't be nearly as important here. Drafting will help you in catching up, Paul, but it won't let you pass the cars. You can't draft like you do at Daytona and Talladega and so on. So what they have to do is they have to really drive them harder, different here, and they have to handle better, like taking care of their tires. There's a lot of turns here, and it's fast speed through the turns. So it's going to be the driver. All right, here's the way they line up for this final round of the International Race of Champions. The front row on the pole, the silver car, road racer Jeff Brabham. 
and Scott Sharp from Road Racing will start alongside. Back in the second row, Tommy Kendall in that bright red car from Road Racing and Danny Sullivan from IndyCar. In row number three, the black car is Dale Jarrett. Kyle Petty is in the blue car, both from NASCAR Winston Cup Racing. In the fourth row, Al Unser Jr. in the lime green car and stock car driver Rusty Wallace. In the fifth row, Steve Kinzer and Jack Baldwin. And in the sixth and final row, Dale Earnhardt in the pink car, and in the aqua car is Mark Martin, the points leader. Jeff Brabham brings the field down as the green flag comes out. Immediately, Petty looks to the inside. They go four wide, heading into the first turn. Al Unser Jr. down very low. It's Sharp and Brabham at the front as they stay side by side. Kendall closes into third, then Dale Jarrett. Kyle Petty is in fourth on the low side. Rusty Wallace challenges for fourth on the high side. For a bless. Press coming off the turn for a while there, Paul. Kinzer and Earnhardt battle at the back of the field, closing up behind Al Unser. Now let's watch and see what Kinzer does. He's not used to Michigan. It's his first time here. Way low. Earnhardt playing it very careful as they come to the end of the first lap. 50 laps, the scheduled distance, 100 miles. They cross the line with Brabham still in the lead. Tommy Kendall in second place. On board Steve Kinzer's car now, as you look ahead the little out. Kyle Petty sits high. You can hear him getting on and off the gas. And when you're into all that air drafting like that, the air disturbs the car an awful lot, so the guys can't just nail the drums. Tommy in. Kendall goes for the lead. Rusty Wallace is there giving him a little drafting help as Tommy Kendall moves to the lead around Jeff Brabham. But look how high he gets. He gets caught way up there. He was in trouble, and now Wallace takes the lead. He had her made for a while, Kendall did. He slid right out too high out into the gray stuff. Probably could have spun it right there. Three wide across the line, led by Wallace as the fight continues in the final round of IROC 18. At Michigan International Speedway, Rusty Wallace is in front, but right now, Mark Martin is challenging. Al Unser Jr. has closed up behind Martin, and then Jack Baldwin, who continues to stay in the fight, along with Tommy Kendall, all of them contenders in the championship. And the guy in the pink car right behind is Dale Earnhardt, probably the guy that most of them are worried about the most. They have a little trouble at the start getting going, up and running good now. I don't know how good he is running, though, Bobby. He is still way back in the field. Remember Talladega when he came to the front at the end of one lap as we watch Tommy Kendall. There they come through again. Five laps are complete. Scared Tommy Kendall a little bit. He did that big slide up high, went for the lead, got it, and slid up high, and he's been a little bit worried since. A lot more conservative. Mark Martin pokes his nose out. In fact, that wobbles the back end of Rusty Wallace's car as he looks for racing room. Looking back from Mark Martin's car again, that's Al Unser Jr. and Jack Baldwin following. Little Al closing right in now on the back stretch. And he's going to give him a little help. There it is. Whoa! In the place of passes, going right here into turn three. Come on, Mark Mark. You're not going fast enough for little Al. Martin now making his move on Rusty Wallace. This is the fight for the lead. That's a good place to pass on the outside because the guy in the bottom is holding the guy at the top. For example, Wallace is holding Barton down. That's the way the air works. Little Al, for example, right behind there is getting a nice draft out of both of the cars. Little Al hooks on the back of Wallace. Wallace reached up and waved Little Al to come on. That'll keep Martin trapped up in the high groove. They'll get so desperate here pretty soon, they'll start wanting bumping. And I think that's what Wallace wanted Little Al to do. Just give him a little tiny bump but going down the straight, he's not into the turn. Alistair Jr. down inside and alongside Mark Martin, Tommy Kendall, and Jack Baldwin continue to stay close to the front of this bike. Side by side, all the way through three and four. Martin goes very high. Whoa. Now, little Al should have held Mark Martin, down, Mark Martin down on that by the airflow that goes around. But Mark almost got up and hit the wall. Now, these, again, are very hard tires. These are Daytona tires on the car here. And they're hard, and it takes a few laps for them to get hot so they soften up a little bit. Three wide as they made the turn into one. We take a look back now from 
Steve Kinzer's car, the sprint car champion. Greatest champion sprint car racing has ever seen. Remember, he won at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt, the pink car, still sitting well back in the field. Has been running steadily in ninth place. The key here today is truly victory for almost everyone. Consider what we said at the top of the program. The bonus points can be so critical here. Right now, the championship is in the hands of Rusty Wallace. There's nine guys that mathematically could win. If enough guys drop out, the guy in ninth place could win. Or wouldn't have to drop out, finish last place type. Rusty Wallace comes through, and then a three-way battle for second. In fact, it stretches all the way back to Baldwin now. Everybody right together. You look back at Baldwin from Steve Kinder's car. Battle for second. Al Enter Jr. comes alongside Martin. I think little Al and Martin both know that the hardest passing is going to be today that it's important to stay at least in second place because a little bit of draft that you get here, not enough to pass with, but really help. Second place car, Mark Martin, you're on there for a second. As he closes in and looks for room again alongside Wallace, as you said at the start, Bobby, drafting not quite as critical. You're going to have to be able to drive these cars as hard as you can. Battle going on for third at the same time. Allinger Jr. separates third alone, and now it's Steve Kinzer and Jack Baldwin fighting side by side. And a battle at the front for the lead as Little Al comes up, gives a nudge to Rusty Wallace. Keeps him in front. Martin drops back to third. Now there was a little tap that we talked about a little while ago. Little Al just barely tapped him, and he pulled Little Al right on through, so put a side-by-side -side race into a single foul race. Big advantage for Little Al. Mark Martin is searching all over this racetrack for the fastest possible line but he hasn't found somebody he can hook up with. He needs some help up here. Yes, and I normally the NASCAR guys hook up and team up together, but right now it's just everybody for themselves. Little Al there just right ahead of the line car. Mark Martin we're on board with right now, and you can see the different grooves that they're trying. Jack Baldwin in the yellow car who currently runs in fourth place said before the race that he got a good nod from Little Al. Confidence that if he got in trouble, the little Al would be his drafting partner on this round. Right now, little Al is in attack position on Rusty Wallace, who, if the championship. Whoa, and there's Dale Jarrett in trouble as he takes the car all the way to the wall. Oh, and he hit hard. Look at that. Dale Jarrett up against the wall with the front end. And that just once again emphasizes what you said you're going to have to stay on top of these cars the compound is fairly hard here so that it will go properly the distance and that means you have to stay on top of the machine all the way you know you can almost tell what compound there was on the tires when he just stopped spinning you could hear the tires balling you could just about tell that they were daytona tires here's the situation bobby watch the black car he got a little help right there looks like kendall helped him Went right on around. Now, he didn't expect that at all. That was an unexpected spin on Jared's part. Little tap from the rear. And at the same time, Kyle Petty had to put his head down and go through there because he was just barely missed by the spinning car of Dale Jarrett. So we're under yellow here, and laps under the yellow do not count in the International Race of Champions. Rusty Wallace is the leader, but it's not nearly over yet. Michigan International Speedway, the final round of the International Race of Champions will determine the champion today. Under a full course yellow, laps under yellow do not count. Here's the reason. That's Dale Jarrett. You're watching from Dale Earnhardt's car, and the real key is Tommy Kendall just behind Jarrett. Watch that red car right there behind it. Now watch the Jarrett's car right there. Wham! Kendall swung across, just barely bumped him. Kendall's on the left in the red car. He got by all right. Here you'll see it there. The black car on the left, the red car on the right. Tommy's coming up on him closer, closer, closer. Boom, right there. He hits him, spins him around. Tommy goes by straight, which really saved him. Jared doesn't know what happened. Bam, he hits the wall really hard. And Missed Kyle the Petty jumped all over the brakes to get away from this. Now, of course, these are the racing Dodge Avengers. In this week's Mechanics of Racing, Jack Aroot takes a look at the difference between the Avenger and its racing counterpart in the IROC. Well, here it is, the brand new passenger car version of the new Dodge Avenger, hot off the assembly line. We've been racing Dodge Avenger since early February, so let's see how the race car measures up against its passenger car cousin. 
One great thing about the passenger car, it comes with a door, so you don't have to climb in and out of the window the way the race car drivers do. The Spartan racing interior has been replaced with all the plushness you could imagine. CD, stereo, cruise control, you can get it all in the passenger car. The Viper-type front end that we saw on the race car, it's found its way to the passenger car as well with a couple of changes. Your passenger car won't come with protective screening in the radiator area, and the race car doesn't have any headlights. The aerodynamic applications between the two are extremely similar, and there's a reason for that. Whether you're doing 55 miles an hour or 155 miles an hour, aerodynamics add to fuel economy and to stability. The rear bumper area beneath it, the ribs that you see on the race car, well, in a modified fashion, they too are on your passenger car version. One big change, though. Gone is the rear spoiler from the race car. It's been replaced by a small wing on the back end of the passenger car. Now, this passenger car will go to Victory Lane later today. You see, it's going to be awarded to the overall champion in the 1994 International Race of Champions. At Michigan International Speedway, we're ready to run back to the green flag. Rusty Wallace in front of Al Unser, Jr. In third place, it is Mark Martin, who at the moment would have the IROC championship by running in that position. But we are a long way from the finish, and Jack Baldwin is sitting just behind Mark Martin trying to close in. You now ride with Mark Martin, Allen Jr. just ahead. Rusty Wallace already begins to pull out, works a low groove into the corner, and then comes out nice and high. Little Al has fallen back. Now, I've looked for Mark Martin to try a pass on him. This will be going down into the third turn right here. Really up tight on Little Al. Mark Martin challenging Al Unter Jr. Baldwin pulls in. Which one is he going to go with? Will he help Martin? Will he try to come up and help Little Al? Remember, Paul, it's important. Like you see Baldwin trying to get under Martin right there. And the yellow car now. Whoa! Whoa. Man. He skates. Now you can... comes up and goes to the inside. Earnhardt, as they go four wide, looks in. He touches him. Earnhardt drops back behind Baldwin. They were four wide, and there wasn't four car widths there. Boy. That got so close and so much tapping going on from front and back there, I couldn't even keep up my train of thought right there. Looking back from Mark Martin now, that's Earnhardt on the left side. Now, often as these cars get close together side by side, they suck themselves into each other. And that's a lot of the tapping sideways that we were seeing there. Now riding with Dale Earnhardt, Martin just ahead. Kinzer makes his move. And now Martin picks up the Earnhardt assistant. Kinzer slid out just like Kendall did a little while ago. You can pass all right, but the tires don't get enough ease and they slide a little bit back. Now with the help of Baldwin, Earnhardt on the low side. And Baldwin splits him. He hasn't decided who he's going to go with. But Earnhardt suddenly looking very strong. You're on board now with Steve Kinzer. Baldwin right ahead in the yellow car. Really racing hard right now. Well, I'll tell you what, Baldwin's leaning into everybody here. You said it at starting. He wants this championship, and he wants it bad. He wants Back it. At the front. Here is Al Unser Jr. closing on Wallace. Yeah, remember, Jack Baldwin wants everybody right there in the yellow car. He wants everybody to know he's a stock car driver. He wants to go to NASCAR and be respected. The field still very tightly bunched. That yellow helped a couple of people, perhaps most notably Earnhardt, who is definitely alive now and running in third place. Now, you notice old Al following Wallace there, and they're not getting out of line with each other. They're not racing each other. They're way up in front. The cream cutter, little Al, and the lime green car, they're breaking or trying to break any draft that there might be. Now, at Michigan, you can do it a lot easier than you can at Daytona or at Talladega. It doesn't take as much space to do it. A very tight point spike. Nine possibilities for a champion as they came into this round. One has been eliminated by accident. That is Dale Jarrett. He, of course, is okay, but he is out of the battle, so eight are now fighting for the championship. Now, it's really important for little Al to go behind Dusty and tap him and get a little bit more speed so the two of them can break that draft. Now, that's what they're thinking about, but little Al has to tap him a little bit. And as Mark Martin faded back in the field, Based on positions at the moment, that gave the championship over to Rusty Wallace. Earnhardt was able to move into second place in the points during the run here. Martin's fallen to third. Looking over from Steve Kinzer's car as Mark Martin begins to pull ahead. And now you're on board with Mark. Baldwin just ahead. Kinzer's stuck somewhere down on the inside. Well, it really gives you a feel of what it looks like to the driver. Look at Jeff Brabham. Just shot from the high side, a little bit ahead right there. In the gray car on the left, that's Jeff Brabham. Silver car. 
Crabham, who has twice won High Rock rounds, both of them here at Michigan International. On the zone, out there on the outside through. Earnhardt with Baldwin in pursuit. Rusty Wallace still the key player at the moment. Wallace with Allinger Jr. glued to his rear bumper. They both see the advantage of that and begin to pull away. Looking back from Dale Earnhardt now as Baldwin inches up. So Rusty Wallace is still in command, but the top of the order continues. International race of champions. Two cars in trouble. Sullivan and it looks like Scott Sharp both spinning in two. Neither one of them catching either the wall hard nor one another. It's certainly going to be hard on the tires. They're both going to have to have tires after that because they slid a long ways, Paul. Of course, the yellow comes out. This is the second yellow of the day. The first for Dale Jarrett as Sullivan and Sharp both get underway. Let's right now go pit side, though, because Dale Jarrett's already changed into a civilian clothes, Jack. Well, Dale Jarrett, you're okay, but tell us what happened up there. I uh, got a little tap there. Uh, just as I got back into the gas uh, over in the middle of three and four, and, uh, you know, I thought I'd got in it pretty good, but obviously I, somebody else didn't think I was going fast enough. You began the IROC season getting your bell rung at Daytona. Now you ended here with another crash. This has got to be a disappointment for you. Well, I had two-thirds and two crashes, so uh, I guess I should have known what was coming. But, yes, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because I really enjoy this series. Hate it for the guys that work so hard because these are really fun cars to race, and I appreciate the opportunity. It's been a lot of fun. Paul? Dale Jarrett. In the meantime, over in the pits, they put new tires on Scott Sharp's car. Let's take a look at that situation again. Sullivan and Scott running right together on the course, and Scott just lost the nose down to the inside, tapped the wall. Did some pretty severe damage to the back of the car, though. Well, at Michigan International Speedway, we continue under yellow with round four. The green flag comes out after our second yellow of the day. They're all packed up again. It's Rusty Wallace leading them around, followed by Al Unter Jr. and Dale Earnhardt. Bobby, one would guess that that is where the focus of the championship will develop. At this moment, it is Rusty Wallace that leads the points. Second in the points is Earnhardt. Al Unter Jr. is sitting down in fourth place with Mark Martin in third. But Martin has slid back through this field and is not a contender at this moment. Yeah, and if you take a little while ago, Wallace and little Al had a pretty good advantage. They had a, was quite a way ahead of the guy on the right there, Neil Earnhardt. Now, because of yellow, he's closed up as well as Jack Baldwin, the yellow car right there. So now the race is really back on just like it never happened before. Mark Martin in his position as a result of just good consistent driving as we take a look at Al Unser Jr. picks up the toe from Earnhardt and little Al and Earnhardt go flying past Wallace and they pick up the first two spots. Now that was totally planned. I mean Dale Earnhardt just bumped little Al, pushed him right on by. There was nothing that Rusty could do about it. Rusty lost his teammate so to speak. Now Rusty with Jack Baldwin going to give him some help. They go to the inside of Earnhardt. Looking over from Dale's car, Wallace bobbles just a little. Now he runs alone. Dale is and way. Baldwin's in trouble. There's Jack Back. Baldwin spinning. You can just see that the cars are not handling all that well on the track today. Well, I think we saw a hint of that when we saw the bobble from Rusty Wallace. I think that was when Baldwin actually broke the draft and pulled away from him. Baldwin's okay, though, not against the wall. Yellow will come out. And he'll have to have new tires because he certainly has put flat spots on his tires. So the front positions change. Al Unser Jr. now leads Rusty Wallace as Jack Baldwin, who was very definitely in the fight, comes in for some tires. Will this work to Baldwin's advantage, though? It'll take a while for these tires to come in. Well, I don't think it's going to work the advantage. Passing is really hard to take. It didn't look like it right there for a while because, boy, they were going after it. But by the same token, he's going to have to go back to the back of the field. That's going to make it really hard for Baldwin. Scott Sharp is out of the action as a result of a bent rear axle. That's his contact with the wall earlier. Let's go back and look at that pass for the lead. Here is Rusty Wallace on the left of your screen. Now Earnhardt comes up and picks up Little Al. Now look at Earnhardt. He's right behind Little Al. He's pushing him now. He's right up there. He's just giving him a little tap right there. Look at that. He's absolutely touching him and pushing right by, but being really careful not to let little Al get sideways. As soon as he gets down to the turn, he eases off just a little bit, carried them both right by Rusty Wallace. Some last-minute repairs. Jason Norrie of the IROC team working on Baldwin's car, Jack Root. Well, you can see they're doing the work on the front spoiler area, trying to fix the damaged fiberglass. We'll see if we can get a word with Jack Baldwin. 
Jack, what happened up there? I just got under Dale and uh, couldn't hold him down. I was off the throttle and uh, just slid up into him, and uh, nothing I could do. And, you know, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad I still got a good Avenger here. We're gonna we're gonna get back in line and try this again. Getting awfully aggressive. He's going. Getting real aggressive. He's out of there. Here's the situation now. That's Baldwin, the yellow car. Just as he described it, he got down inside Dale. And once again, everybody scrambles for cover trying to get around him. He had Dale completely up in the top end of the track. Dale almost spun also. Here it is again from the top of Mark Martin's car. There's Baldwin just ahead. The quick tap. He slides sideways. Baldwin moves up as Kinzer comes back. Now we're ready to race. Green flag is back out. We're ready to go racing once again. Now, they line up according to the way they went into the yellow, which was Rusty Wallace in the lead, Al Unger Jr. in second, Earnhardt in third. Or in other words, they always line them up by the way the last green flag was. And that's the reason we saw a little Al go in the lead, but he had to go back to second. Wallace is the new leader. Now let's see if Earnhardt and little Al do the same thing they did before. There's Earnhardt behind him. Is he going to push him up true? The exception being Jack Baldwin, who because he caused the incident, moves to the back of the order. First, second, and third remain the same. Mark Martin sits in fourth. Now look at there. There's Earnhardt going underneath the Lal. I Whoa. think Lal was expecting a little help from him to push him to, like they did before, in the same place they're at right now. Looks like he nudged little Al a little bit as he came through there. Now Earnhardt slides to second. Martin's helping Earnhardt. The Lal goes back to fourth or fifth. The anticipation of help just didn't help right <laughs> On board with Martin now. Now looking back from Earnhardt at Mark Martin. Earnhardt, third place car. Martin, the third place car. Earnhardt, the second. The leader, of course, is Rusty Wallace. Maybe tip going a little more. They learned the lesson. There's Steve Kinzer there. Inside is Kinzer. And Good. now here comes Little Al. Three abreast down the backside. Now across the front stretch into the tri oval. On board with Kinzer as Martin sweeps across the front there. Here comes Kyle Petty. Oh, All of at, these names are still in this championship fight. Look at those shots from the cameras. Right now that fight continues. If it ended at this moment, Rusty Wallace would be the champion. But we're a long way from the end. We're just barely to the halfway point. Not quite there yet. Just over a little bit of not being able to plan out the traffic just right. Look at little Al gone back to ninth place. That's in two laps. So, at the same time, Jack Baldwin has been able to move forward. We haven't seen racing this good mission in the boat. Looking back to Martin from Earnhardt. As the fight among the stock car greats continues. Wallace, Earnhardt, Mark Martin at the front of the field, and here comes Earnhardt with Martin's help now. He moves high on Wallace. And he keeps Rusty down there to the left. You notice how Martin got up just far enough to where Rusty couldn't get up behind Dale. No help from the draft there. Rusty is off to the side on the right in the cream-colored car. Really hurt him. He's going to go back to third. That's the first and third with one easy move. Rusty stays in there. There's Jack Baldwin as he moves his way back through the field trying desperately to get back in touch with the front of this field so that he can stay in the championship fight. Out in front, Earnhardt with Martin challenging. Wallace helping, helping Martin. And they force Earnhardt out. And look, Baldwin is already back up in fourth place. Wallace almost waited too long on that. He needed to go just a little bit sooner in order to help Mark Martin get by. There's Martin, Rusty Wallace, and Earnhardt. One heck of a race. At the moment, Mark Martin is exactly where he wants to be. The question is, can he stay there? We'll be back. At Michigan International now, moving to the inside, Earnhardt, as he takes his chances with Rusty Wallace, hoping that Baldwin will come out and help him. But Baldwin runs his own lane, and Baldwin powers past Earnhardt. Can he get Wallace as well? Well, he got a draft going by Earnhardt. Got a lot of help. He must have really got good traction coming off the last turn there. If he can keep her down here and keep alongside Wallace, now Baldwin's looking for room. He can't find it. He tries to find something with Earnhardt. Earnhardt's not about to let him in now. Well, he hated that. Baldwin hated that because he was there. He 
It's come from all the way in last place up to there. He had it, but he couldn't get back in. And look at him slide back now as Mark Martin continues the lead. One of America's most recognizable corporate symbols, the Goodyear blimp, hovers overhead, providing aerial views of the international race of champions. Averaging 157 miles an hour, the fight continues with Wallace now attacking at Earnhardt. Sooner or later, the guys from NASCAR, look at this, Wallace helps Earnhardt out a little bit, helps him again. One more time. There you go. That's a bump. <laughs> now, that's really a lot of help. Is that just a reminder that he's there, or is that really helping him that no, much? No, that's helping him. He pushed him right up to Mark Martin. One more tap, and he'd have pushed him into Martin, I think, Paul. Looking back from Mark Martin's car, as Earnhardt getting a lot of help from Rusty Wallace. And there you saw Earnhardt say, come on, do it again. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's amazing how stable these Dodge Avengers have proven. Three abreast. This late in the race, three abreast. And Earnhardt back to the front again. Unbelievable. Look at Tommy Kendall, though, as Kendall continues in the fight. And Kendall can win this championship. And he was so close to being able to block the position so he could have gone up another slot right there. And Earnhardt gets a little help from Mark Mark. Just a, a smidge of a second there. He could have had Wallace underneath where he couldn't do anything about it. And the front six blows up together once again. There's the front three. And now four as you take a look at Kendall, who stays right in there, glued to the back end of Wallace. Al Unser Jr. and Baldwin are closing in, too. There you see little Al and Jack Baldwin. Fight for the lead continues. Earnhardt holds it. Rusty Wallace tries the low side. Now you can see neither one of them have any help. They're just side by side, a flat race right down the straightaways now. Let's see who comes out ahead on this. Rusty Wallace looks for room behind Earnhardt. Earnhardt's back in the championship position. Kendall is caught out alongside Baldwin. That may give little Al an advantage. There's going to be some touching here pretty soon. They can't run this close. This long left, somebody's touching. Boy, soon. look at Kendall hold on down low there. That's incidentally where little Al's been running. He's come all the way from ninth up to sixth, back and forth, fifth and sixth, and he's been doing it on the low line. Wallace. Comes up to try and help Earnhardt. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, one of the unique differences with these cars is the drivers don't have the luxury of a radio. They're alone with their thoughts. The only thing they have is this pit signalman. He counts down the laps to the finish from 50 on down as we get down to the waning moments here in IROC competition. And they move for the lead as Rusty Wallace moves inside of Earnhardt. And just that quickly, he's got him. Earnhardt was in the point position, and then this pass occurs. Now, here comes Mark Martin. Yeah, the interesting thing about that was is Rusty didn't use any help from anybody. He just pulled out and did it himself. Now, that's going to have Earnhardt really wondering what's happening. Perhaps of greater interest is the swap this way puts Mark Martin in the championship position, despite the fact that he sits back in third place. Now, you're on board with Martin. So he's the champion at this moment, but it's been switching every lap. And you know, these guys can't even figure it up. They have no radios, like Jack said. So they, there goes Mark up by Earnhardt. Look at that. Side by side, going down into turn three. He scrubs with him going into the corner. As the fight continues, Wallace is up in front, and he's just picked up five bonus points for leading the most lap thus far. And in doing that, Rusty Wallace jumps into the points lead. He leads the race. He's got the bonus points. He's looking solid in the championship. And the day started nine, had a shot at the ground. But now we're running out of Mark Martin. Now moves to the outside of Wallace. At the same time, Alan Sir Jr. gave a little help to Kendall and then pulled high on Kendall. So now we have three cars. All Winston Cup drivers battling for the lead, but road racer Tommy Kendall and IndyCar driver Alan Jr. closing on this group. Mark Martin back from Earnhardt, the current leader. Wallace slides into third. Mark's whole method was to stay tight to Earnhardt so Wallace can't sneak in because at least that gives him second place right there. The middle car of the blue and Mark Martin. Wallace right behind him, who's been leading an awful lot of the laps. And look at Tommy Kendall as he comes down low on Al Unser Jr. Baldwin closing in again, but little Al doesn't let him in this time. Baldwin would like to grab the position. Al Unser Jr. drops in behind Rusty Wallace. Taking little Al all these laps to get back in contention. He needed a little help. He's helped a lot, and he's got a little bit of help getting there. 
Two road racers, Jack Baldwin and Tommy Kendall, battle at the back of this pack. Neither one helping, and they touch. Baldwin gets slammed into the side of Kendall. Almost spotted out. You see all that quivering he was doing? That's mostly the car kid his straight. Not much choice he had there. And he keeps it going. Baldwin's still okay and running as Wallace moves down to the inside of Martin, and he tries to lead. Martin blows up. He doesn't want Wallace to get back in this line. Only eight laps to go. You can see the importance of it. This is for the championship, $200,000. And, Bobby, it's not nearly decided yet. With Earnhardt in front, Martin and Earnhardt are right now tied for the championship. Now, let's go back and take a look at the replay and keep an eye on the yellow car in the back. That's right there. Almost fun. It really wiggled bad. And Mark Martin comes down inside of Earnhardt, scrubs a little paint with him as they come across the line. And with the help of Al Hunter Jr., Mark Martin goes for the lead. And little Al has been planning this for a long time. Him and Mark Martin, they went from way back, or not from that, little Al's going way back, helping Mark Martin get by. Now at least he's in second, Wallace and Earnhardt. Everybody's going to start their team planning right now. And that gives Mark Martin, as we look back to Al Hunter Jr., a little firmer grip on the lead. But now little Al comes in to contest that. And little Al comes to the lead. From way back in ninth place, little Al is able to work his way back to the front. But there's been a lot of racing here. I mean, this thing is just changing sometimes twice a lap. Look at Mark Martin getting up there now. What's he going to do, little Al? Al Hunter Jr. gives him a wave. Is he trying to get him forward? What is he doing? Oh, he there? wants him to tap him. A little tiny tap going down the straightaway makes so much difference in the speed. You can look at the bumpers and see they've been getting tapped a bunch today. Mark Martin chasing down Al Hunter Jr. Rusty Wallace flies in third. Earnhardt in fourth. Baldwin fifth. Tommy Kendall sixth. All of those things figure into this championship. But the laps are running down right now. That man holds the championship in his hands. Mark Martin. The laps are running down, and the guys in the back are not teaming up. They're staying single file. Now, that's strange. They're coming around there to just two laps left after they come by to start to finish here. I think they're all pretty savvy, and they realize that they don't want to help Mark Martin out if they can. Rusty Wallace and Dale, they need that position. But it should be Earnhardt pushing Wallace by. That's what really needs to happen. Jack Baldwin underneath. They're all racing for their own right now, Paul, and no more teamwork, which is strange. Al Unser Jr. leads the run. Mark Martin at this moment leads the championship. The only way that you can pass, we've seen that, is to bump the guy in front of you, and he'll help you get by the others. That's been the most common way today. The final two laps of the season-long international race of champions. A familiar sight, Al Unser Jr. out in front. Mark Martin comfortable in second place for the moment. And with the championship as the white flag for one more lap to go in this year's IROC. Everybody want to make their cars wide as they can right now. No far, no bumpy. The key is still this man, Mark Martin. You ride with the IROC champion if he can only maintain position. Here are the two guys that can change it, Earnhardt and Wallace. Wallace and Earnhardt stay in position down the back stretch. The fight's actually going to come to the line. Little Al winning the race won't hurt Mark Martin, but Little Al wants to win the race because he can't win the championship unless all those other guys drop down. They stretch out, coming through three and four. Turning for the line now, Wallace closes in. Earnhardt closes in just a bit. The checkered flags await Al Unser Jr. And at the same time that Al Unser Jr. takes the win, Mark Martin takes the championship. For Mark Martin, win at Darlington and a consistent run throughout the year and he is the IROC champion. We'll be back to talk with him. Spencer Jr., congratulations on the win. Your wife Shelly wearing green socks today. We understand you were a little upset about that. Well, you know, a green car on an oval just uh, isn't very good luck in America, but uh, today it was darn good luck here at Michigan and, you know, I just want to thank uh, the Dodge people and, and everybody involved, you know, True Value Hardware, Goodyear Tire, everybody, they've done a super job. And, uh, you know, if uh, if I wouldn't have fallen out of those couple races, maybe we'd have had a shot at them. But uh, I want to congratulate Mark Martin for doing a great job and, and winning the series. So, Paul, one consolation, he's the winningest driver in IROC history. Al Unser Jr. takes his eighth IROC victory, but that second place and bonus points were good enough for Mark Martin to take the championship. Let's go back to Jack Aroot.
Paul, we're with Mr. Robert Lutz, who's the president and chief operating officer for Chrysler Corporation, and you have a very special presentation to the IROC champion this year. Right. It's our privilege to uh, bestow on the winner of the championship this uh, Dodge Avenger Coupe, brand new 1995, and it's uh, number six off the production line. So, Mark, it's our special privilege to hand you the keys to this brand new Avenger. I this is going to be a little slower than the ones you've been driving out there, though. Boy, I tell you what, this is a great day, and I want to thank you guys from Dodge and True Value and everybody with IROC. You know, I wanted to win worse than anything today, and, and uh, we tried to run a smart race and be in position and lead enough laps to get some bonus points. But all along, I was wanting to win this car. I, can't, I hope it handles as good as that car I drove today. So Mark Martin with 66 points, a full 10 points over Al Unser Jr., Rusty Wallace, and Dale Earnhardt, takes the championship. And for the championship, he earns $200,000 as we look at the earnings for the rest of the field, plus the new Dodge Avenger. Congratulations to Mark Martin, who has taken the crown in the International Race of Champions. I'm Paul Page for Bobby Unser and Jack Aroot. So long from Michigan International Speedway.